Hi everyone, welcome back. Uh, let's get started with a card making tutorial. Today we're going to create an A2 and a mini slimline card uh, using the sunburst or starburst technique. There are a variety of templates out there that you may have seen or used for scrapbooking using the same technique for scrapbooking layouts. We're going to um, go completely with um, out a template and create all of these shapes uh, individually so that each card has its own unique design. No two will be alike. Um, so supplies that are needed, and I will put this in the, the um, description below. Uh, you want to have your card bases ready to go, and as I said, I'm using an A2 and a mini slimline, but any card base will work with this. There are a few considerations, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, I'm using a plain cream and a plain white card base. You can most definitely use a patterned cardstock that would, um, or patterned printed cardstock uh, paper that would uh, match the colors that you're using. Uh, a plain cardstock would work as well. Um, so use up those scraps to create the card base. And like I said, I'll put the measurements down below. Um, I'm using Graphic 45 Catch of the Day scraps from a folio album, that project that we did. And I'm on a kick to use these scraps up. So this is how I'm going to uh, do that. I love this particular technique because it allows me to use a mixture of colors. Uh, shapes and sizes so it doesn't matter uh, really if I have um, a 3 inch wide scrap a 12 inch by 2 inch it really doesn't matter they're all usable so it's very flexible in that regard um, the other flexibility with this particular technique not only is it good for a variety of card bases but you um, it does allow you to have your cards horizontal or landscape orientation or portrait vertical. Um, so opening left to right um, or top bottom to top. Flip up. And this one has a little bit of adhesive there. So lots of variety of that. Two things that you need to take into consideration when you um, are choosing your scraps for the card base that you have selected. One is if you choose a card base that's larger on the larger side, you're going to need larger scraps or longer scraps. And the general rule of thumb that I use is you want your um, strips to be at least the length of your uh, longest side of the card base that you're using. So in this case, for the mini slim line, it's a six inch by three and three quarter inch card. So I make sure that my pieces just extend a little bit beyond that six inch line. Um, and that's because you're going to choose a focal point and then your strips of paper will need to extend beyond that. You also use shorter ones, but you wanna make sure that you have enough length in order to cover um, that that much or that large of an area of your space. Again, it depends on where your focal point is. You can definitely keep it more centrally located and then your strips would need to be shorter. Um, I just mix it up and would encourage you to do the same based on the scraps that you have um, available to you that you're using. And you'll, you'll get the um, uh, get to see how quick and easy these are to create. Um, I use the mini slim line, which is six by uh, three and three quarter inches. And I use the A2 for this, which is a five and a half by four and one quarter inch card. Sometimes I put a mat down and that mat size will be listed below for both cards. Other times I just use the um, design itself to go right on top of the card base. Um, in any case, I always use the um, starburst, what I call the starburst base. This is the piece of paper that I'm going to design on. 
uh, to apply it to the card foundation. Um, in this case, I'm going to use a white card base. So I have a white background because the white will show through between my pieces. And I'm going to mount that on a piece of navy cardstock and then add it to the card. Um, I'll have measurements for all three of these things for the card and the card size and the mat, the foundation mat, as well as the um, mat that you will actually create the starburst on. They'll be in the description and you can check them out. We'll do the same thing for the A2 and we'll just talk about some of these little differences as we go along. Um, the other thing that I've gone ahead and done is just stamped a basic image and mounted it onto the matching color uh, cardstock and then added a, an accent color to the background so that it will be ready for me to add onto the card. So we're gonna start with the slimline. And this mat for the mini slimline, which is six inches by three and three quarter inches, this is the one that fits into the number six um, standard stationary envelope. Let me see if I can grab it here. Um, which is, you can purchase in any grocery store, store around. So they're store-bought envelopes, nothing special with them. Of course, there are many manufacturers out there who do supply them. But um, all we're going to do now is start with our angled pieces. Oh, and how do we get the angled pieces? Really easy. Again, any size scrap that you have, you have a couple options. You can cut completely, down through the center and the diagonal, bottom left, top right, or top left, bottom right, doesn't matter. That This would give you a fairly large piece, which is going to take up a larger area on the card. My favorite thing to do to create some texture, dimension, and to allow me to use more colors, is to cut a piece like that in half, and then I hand cut, use your trimmer, I understand that uh, and just go from one corner to the next to create your angles you do want to make sure you pay attention to directional papers so that what you are cutting through if it needs to be legible or should be legible make sure that you are cutting it in the direction so that when you use it it will be directional um, Again, you want to use a piece that is just a little bit longer than your longest dimension. Um, have a good variation in widths of your triangles that you're cutting. I have some long thin ones and some short squatty ones. And um, you'll need a pair of scissors if you want to ink edges. And here you can see the difference between these two cards. I have inked the um, one on the left. The white one is not inked, um, completely up to you whether you wish to do that or not, but you might want to do those pieces ahead of time, ink those pieces ahead of time. We'll just leave these scraps along the side and go from there. So this one is going to be horizontal. I could definitely make it a vertical piece too. We don't have a vertical sample, so let's make a vertical. In doing it this way, this orientation, I'm going to need a little bit longer pieces down towards the bottom. And if I want my greeting to be to the top, then my focal point, my center, is going to be underneath this greeting this stamped greeting. And I'm doing a very basic card. Um, I encourage you to highlight it with additional embellishments, accent pieces. Um, do what you need to do based on your creativity, your what appeals to you. Again, there's no right or wrong way. I'm just using my scraps um, they all came in this collection, and I'm basically going to try to use as many different colors as I possibly can with this particular 
design. Um, I oftentimes will lay the first few pieces down and get a feel for things, decide whether or not I'm going to repeat these colors or try to work in a series of all different colors to create the, the card base. Um, so again, up to you. Another option is I've left space about a sixteenth of an inch between each um, shape that I put down. You do not need to do that. You may place these right up against one another so that there's no space in between there at all. It is, again, your personal preference. My angles are not, sometimes my edges are not perfectly cut, so I oftentimes um, leave the gap in the center so or in between them so that I can... Um, have a little bit of forgiving space there. There is also no right or wrong place to start with this. I somehow tend to start with the longest piece first um, and then I'm just putting adhesive all the way to the point so that it is nice and secure and I'm going to keep building filling up this space with different colors or whatever the rotation is going to be. If you're going to repeat your colors, um, that is perfect too. We're just laying these down. And again, if you want to ink, you should do that ahead of time. Metal is great for this project too. Any of you that work with metal or the uh, use the metal paper or the metal sheets, um, the old, I'm thinking 10 second studios, um, you can definitely use those here as well. So I have a few on and I'm just going to trim these off using the mat as my guide. And I may have to come back in with a liquid adhesive and seal down the edges along the edges before I actually add this to the card. Um, you just have to be cautious of that. And that's what happens whenever you have uh, adhesive on the back here. So now I can use these pieces to finish the edge, just key or finish going around, just keep rotating. In fact, we'll just do that little bit of repeat here. And I do want to show you, I'm this is not a, a complete angle from this tip to here, but it's going to be covered up so no one will see that. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little more adhesive on and just use these scraps to create this card. And I will end up repeating this. And again, that's going to be covered a tad. I am going to trim this off just even though it's going to be covered, this will help with the addition of the next piece so that it fits. That piece is not going to work. So add some adhesive on here. And it's very much like a puzzle piece. And you just want to make sure both edges extend beyond the side of the card that you're working with. I'll go ahead and cut these off. And again, I'm sticking to these four papers as much as I can. And until I run out, helps to every once in a while put your greeting on and make sure that it is going to... Um, work, cover up the areas that you want covered up. You can see this one is not going to, boy that would be great if it would cover that much space, but it's just not going to work that way. So maybe, nope, has to go up on this one. So we're going to trim this down and again this is just a scrap from one of the big pieces. So you can really get a lot done here with a very small, you get a really nice card done with a very small amount of uh, scraps. Slide that on and go ahead and cut it off. And 
When I get this close to the end then, I will typically begin to place things to try to fill in this gap and see how much space is available. What other scraps am I going to need to cut um, to include in this, to fill in this gap. And I have my blue wave right here, paper. So this, I will not need to put a, another piece in on the top. Instead, we'll be good to just put a small amount in here to fill in this space right here on the bottom. And that's going to be super easy. So you can see how it's very much like a puzzle piece, even though we are using scraps, triangular scraps. Really quick and easy. And I love to use up my scraps. It is um, so rewarding to know that I have used um, so much of my scraps get your money's worth from them and um, have a greeting handmade greeting to send to uh, people as well and this is just I send a lot of thank you cards so this is a standard greeting for me I um, do the a lot of these stamped these on white and um, ivory and just keep them ready to go at all times so um, please use the greeting of your choice and again if you want to add any kind of embellishments or stickers really spruce this up a bit it's there's lots of options for that I keep mine very simple and um, that is my preference. So again, we're going to place this on the background, the uh, navy mat. If you're inking, you may want to ink the edges of this as well. And remember to glue the surfaces down, check for loose pieces, take care of that. And we'll add this piece to our card and this will be our mini slim line. And again, I'll place the measurements for the card base, including the scoring lines, the measurements for the mats, all of those will, will be in the description below. I do have some of the mini slimline card bases available for purchase in my Etsy shop as well. That link will be, be below um, as well. So that is the mini slimline. And here, just for reference, you can see orientation, both landscape and portrait, vertical and horizontal horizontal. All right, let's move on to our A2. This time we are going to use a lighter blue mat and we're using a steno card. So this one opens top to bottom or we can go horizontal. It is the A2 size, but it's just a little different orientation. Same great kind of card gone ahead and matted my uh, message and this time we're going to start with some fish and this is an example of a directional piece of paper um, pay attention to that and make sure that you are um, liking the direction that you're going I'm doing another top orientation with this so my greeting is going to go in the same spot basically that I did the last card so I just picked the focal point and I'm just going to keep building my paper around and I'm I'm doing this very hap haphazard I may get into trouble with this and end up with two colors being used two matching colors being used at the end but I really do enjoy just 
putting triangles down without a plan and seeing where it ends up. So let's add some red fish in here. And I will, I would like to challenge you also, use your scraps and create a Starburst card. Um, and if you are so inclined, post a picture of it below and we'll give these sample cards to one lucky winner. Um, deadline, hmm, let's give you time to create and celebrate world card making week perhaps um comment by hmm, i'll post the date below to comment by so that uh, you can be included in for prize drawing for these cards that we've created all right so now we have a few scraps that we can definitely use to fill in at the very end. But I'm going to go ahead and put some others. And this little tip is a little flyaway here. Might be hard to see on the camera, but it I did not get adhesive on the very tip. That can be a problem. So I'm just applying some adhesive, some liquid adhesive on the base there and will get that secured and in place and we'll begin to round the corners here what are some other papers that we can use some blue This gives the look of embossing, an embossed look as well, which is, um, they're just very unique, very fun. So I think we're gonna start to repeat some of these pieces here. And to do that, I'm going to use up some of my, try to use up some of my scraps, which may work, may not work. And again, when you reach the top half like this, the only thing you need to be careful of is that your it, it will be okay to use a gap or leave a gap like this because it's going to be covered up by your um, phrase, your greeting. The other thing you want to do is make sure that your make sure that the piece that you're adding, not only that the angles match, but that it is covered it goes off, extends beyond the edge of the uh, base that you're working with. And you should be pretty good then with that. So, um, and you're welcome if you prefer not to use these tiny scraps, um, use the big pieces, no problem with that. Let's make sure that we're still covering and so far we are, we need to come down in a little bit more closely with this next one so we'll fix that fix that one up this one is almost going to fit exactly go parallel lay parallel with that um, the edge of the starburst mat and again, we'll test. Still looking pretty good here. Let's see if our fish, our fish, this piece is not going to work because it doesn't cover up the extent of the card, full extent of the card. This one, I'm going to cut the angle just a bit. And we'll slide that in. Lots of flexibility when you use double-sided cardstock or pattern papers also, especially if they are all part of the same line. And that just will seal the deal here with this last piece. Um, you know the colors are going to blend together and look nice together. Of course, there's nothing that says that you can't mix and match as well. Um, 
So let me know below what you think of this technique, if you've used it before, if you have any tips or techniques for using it. Um, we will be doing more with this particular starburst technique, so stay tuned for some scrapbook layouts, album covers, and some other things um, using it. And I think we're all trimmed up. Our edges seem to be sealed. So we'll go ahead and put our adhesive on. And again, dress this up any way you'd like to. I am keeping it very simple, just with a greeting. Making a very, very, very simple statement. I want the um, attention to go to the thank you, the word, and that's kind of what the Starburst does. So, um, but be as creative as you would like with these. And there you have it, your A2 and your slimline, both in the um, portrait position orientation. Let us know what you think.